The 2018 NBA draft just wrapped up and there were expected to be a lot of trades and it didn't disappoint. Unlike last year, there wasn't any trades involving players already in the league, but it was still a lot of moving pieces with draft picks. I will discuss every draft pick and give draft grades to all teams involved in the draft. It's not always about who you draft, sometimes it's about where you draft the prospect and does he fit the team. There were a lot of quality prospects that didn't get drafted and that was to be expected. A lot of undrafted players will have to fight for a roster spot during summer league. Without further ado, let's get it started. First up, the Southwest Division. The Dallas Mavericks probably got one of the best players in the draft in Luka Doncic. Despite picking fifth, they were able to trade up to get the European sensation. Someone who can take over the franchise when Dirk Nowinski finally retires. Doncic is a supremely skilled all-around prospect who can have a major effect on the game. The 6'8 MVP of the second best league in the world can handle the rock, pass, and score anywhere on the court. His feel for the game is second to none. Average athleticism won't keep him from being great on the offensive end. But defensively, he may struggle a bit. But Dunches is a hard worker who I believe will at least become an average defensive player. Dallas made another great pick with their second pick of the draft with the National Player of the Year, two-time NCAA champion Jalen Bronson. Andre Miller 2.0. Not a quick and explosive prospect, but makes up for it with his awareness, basketball IQ, and shooting. His steadiness and patience as a floor general will be a nice addition off the bench for the Mavericks. I can also see Bronson playing alongside Dennis Smith throughout the game. Dennis Smith can play off the ball because of his scoring ability. Bronson will be ready to come in from day one and play big minutes. Ray Spalding's defensive abilities is the main reason he got drafted. He is still raw offensively and doesn't have a reliable jump shot. But his ability to block shots and guard perimeter players off pick and roll switches makes this pick worthy. He is probably more NBA ready to play than the next guy I'm about to talk about. Kosas Antetokounmpo is a project. No two ways about it. He is not ready to play in the league right now. You may say he's two years away from being two years away, but there's a chance he could carve out a role in the NBA one day. He moves and plays like his brother for the most part. With already drafting quality players like Bronson and Doncic, you can afford to take a gamble on this guy. Because if he pops, every other team will be kicking themselves but the Dallas Mavericks. My draft grade for the Dallas Mavericks is an A+. DeAnthony Melton's drop in the draft could have been because he didn't play a single minute last year at USC because of the FBI investigation. This was a good pick for the Houston Rockets at this spot. I believe his size and defensive abilities is his calling card. He's a smart player who showed good awareness in his freshman year and also contributed across the board. He is not known as a marksman from three-point range, but I have no doubt that he can become an average outside shooter, which would allow him to get consistent minutes in the NBA. The Rockets reportedly traded for the 52nd pick from the Utah Jazz, which was small for Vince Edwards from Purdue. Edwards had a solid four-year career at Purdue and was known as a scorer. The 6'8'4 lacks elite skills and could struggle competing against NBA talent. He does have a seven-foot wingspan and showed flashes of being a good defensive player at times, but he was never consistent. He more than likely will be a long shot to make the team. The only chance he has is to impress the coaches at NBA Summer League this year. My draft grade for the Houston Rockets is a B minus. The Spurs did it again. They managed to be in great position to get a stud in the draft. Lonnie Walker has the talent and physical tools to be a top five player in this draft. He's ready to contribute right away with also having a high upside. He's an explosive athlete who can attack the basket, score off the dribble a little bit, and stroke it from deep. He's a streaky shooter at this point, but when he gets going, he's hard to contain. Lonnie is also a solid defensive player also. He has quick feet and is great at contesting shots. And he gets to play under the best coach in the league who will get the best out of him. Lonnie Walker is in the best spot to maximize his potential. With the 49th pick, the Spurs selected the athletic big man out of USC, Chemezi Metu. He gets most of his points around the rim. He does not have a reliable jump shot at this point. Metu has good hands and footwork and is a solid pick and roll big man. He was a solid shot blocker at USC, but nothing special. 
He isn't as long as you want him to be for a center. He only has a 6'11 wingspan, and he's not good enough offensively to play the power forward position. I can see Matthew playing in the G League for the foreseeable future. My draft grade for the San Antonio Spurs is an A-. minus. Tony Carr was a hell of a scorer in the sophomore season at Penn State. He didn't shoot the best percentage from the field, but that could be because of forcing the issue at times as a scorer, trying to lead a team with average talent through a tough Big Ten conference. Tony Carr is a big guard who knows how to get buckets. I don't have a problem with the prospect. I just don't think the Pelicans needed another point guard on their roster. They drafted a guard last year in Frank Jackson, and they also have Rajon Rondo and Drew Holiday. Carr has a lot of talent, but I don't think he'll be able to show it off in New Orleans. My draft grade for the New Orleans Pelicans is a C+. If the Grizzlies wanted to reestablish that grit and grind attitude, their two picks can definitely help get them back to that mentality. The Grizzlies drafted the big man out of Michigan State, Jaron Jackson Jr. Some people around the league believe Jackson is the best player in the draft. But he's looked at as a project at this point and needs to refine his game a little bit. He has great size and mobility. He shot around 40% from three-point range and was one of the best shot blockers in college basketball last season. It's kind of a weird selection for the Grizzlies though. The Grizzlies are trying to compete now with their best players over 30 and Jackson more than likely won't be ready to provide a consistent impact at this moment. It would have made more sense for the Grizzlies to try to trade for Luka Doncic who is ready to contribute right away. Javon Carter is the point guard version of Tony Allen with a jump shot. His game is tailor made for the old school grit and grind style. He's a Patrick Beverly clone. Carter is a tough and physical defensive point guard who can also shoot it from distance. He is a legit lockdown defensive player. Just ask Trey Young about Javon Carter. Nobody frustrated point guards in college more than Carter. He can no doubt be on the all NBA defensive team in no time. It's not about upside with Javon Carter. He just needs to play at the same level he did in his senior year at West Virginia, and he can play in the league for a long time. My draft grade for the Memphis Grizzlies is a B plus.